Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to discuss about composite failure under explosive loading. And explosive loading means very high strain rates or deformation rates. So I will just, again, this is motivated from a test we did, some people did in the past, and we have simulated this before using peridynamics. So you can look at our paper in that area, but this is just for, for those who ask about it, that how they can apply explosive loading type loads in your abacus simulation in reality it's a multi-physics based problem but i will show you in a very simplistic way how you can do it so again as an analyst it's your instincts which will basically justify what you are doing so let's say we have an explosion so we will have a shock wave or wave traveling in this direction it will have a very huge impact with the surface of this composite here and I have defined this as a pressure, as a function of time. In reality, you can create a kind of oil air type region here, volume here, and you can find out what sort of pressure distribution will be there here. And then you can apply that as, as a boundary condition, or if you have the experimental data, you can define this function as well as the distribution based on the experimental measurements which you can get and in this case i'm just defining a uniformly distributed pressure but it's like kind of a shock wave sort of thing so you see it goes to a very high value and then it decays as you have an explosive explosion loading so this is just made motivated from there and you will see some kind of failure so generally you will see the failure occurs around this and then it also propagates inside the composite itself as well everything is fictitious all the things which i am mentioning here are Fictitious. If you find any similarity, then we have no liability with the data. Also, I have changed all the data, so the data is not real as well. I'm you going to use a number of plies, which I will explain to you how you can define the orientations for that. In this case, I'm going to use 13 plies with 0 degrees and 90 degree fiber orientations. Also, please note that uh, I am using only one shell in thickness direction. With 13 plies but in reality it might be very important to include the delamination effect and for those cases to have delamination between the plies you might need more shells or shell elements in thickness direction so again I'm not really discussing that I have simplified the problem so it's not that easy what I'm showing you here but it's close to reality and there are many things behind it so if you are gonna have delamination there then there are different criterias you can use you can use node separation technique which is based on uh, corrective opening displacements for example so you have a strain based failure criteria in that case or you can have a stress based criteria where you can have maximum tensile or shear stress there or if you have a hybrid type failure where you have failure as a function of strength or stress and also the displacement or strains then you can use cohesive elements between the different layers of plies as well but for that you will need multiple layers of these shell elements okay so i will leave it for this for some other day all right so let's move to the real business and to uh, towards abacus and see how it's being done All right, so, so now I'm in Abacus and you can see this is how it looks like. So if I just plot the animation of this thing, then you will see that the pressure wave starts to act and then how everything builds up and then it starts to fail at this area first and then you will see its failure in the middle parts as well. So, so, so this is how it looks like. From the failure's perspective, you see elements are being deleted and you, you can easily see failure. All right, so let's see how it's being done. First thing is to get the geometry. In this case, I'm using a geometry where my, so I will create an, because I'm gonna fix this outer part, which is this part to be fixed and this area to be free so that the explosion, explosion load really acts on this area, free area. So I have divided it into different areas as you see, and it's also helped in the meshing. So what I have done is I've created part 3D deformable shell and then I say planar right because I'm going to use one ply if you need to use 
different plies and you can have it a stack of it or you can even extrude and create solid elements again there are tutorials on that so i'm not going to go into the details of this so once you do this I, I will, let's create this part to show how i did it so then i created a circle as you see here and then my part would look something like this as a shell element right so if you, you see in a 3d isometric view it looks something like this now what i want i want to divide it into a small i want to have a small strip that will fix it so i'm not going to give you dimensions in this case but what you can do is you can create a sketch over here so you select an edge and then again i will create a circle and done and then you see i have a partition here so i have one part here i have another part here okay now for meshing purposes i'm also dividing it into four quarts in the middle part so that i get a better mesh so that's what i'm going to do again i will select this and then i can select this area and then in this case i'm going to use the lines so because i will just divide them into four equal pieces okay to move then again and this and then when i press done so i have this thing so that's what you see here as part two and i have the part now next thing is to find the properties for properties i'm using the same properties as i have discussed in my video before on composite failure so the video is displayed on the top so have a look at that if you are interested but just to show you what parameters i have used i have to define the density i have defined which is not required but i still have defined it because it's, if i need explicit analysis then i might require it elastic constants again you see i have defined all three directions so i have defined elastic young's modulus poisson's ratio and shear modulus again all this data has been taken from literature for a specific fiber reinforced composite go back to that video and have a look why why it's been done then i have to define the strength so again the same data which i have used before and these are the values which i'm showing you here this is made in millimeters so everything is consistent with that that is newton per millimeter square all right then what i do is instead of defining the section there is no section as you see because i need to define ply so for plies you need to go to this option create ply option and then you can press create composite layup and when you press this then you have this window and then you can define as many plies with orientation material definition and everything all right so i have used in this case uh part two is the one right so i have defined in this case 13 plies as you see here and if i press edit so this is the same thing which you get there so in this case you can see i have plies with a thickness of 0.508 millimeters and then they start with zero degrees 90 degree orientation it goes there and then i have an extra ply at the middle which is zero degrees and then I again repeat the same thing so in total i have 13 plies so if all the 13 plies fail in this composite only then the element will be deleted so remember that from the previous video's discussion all right then assembly i just there's only one part so i just bring it here by instancing so you just press instance and bring the part here as you as i did here then i go to step in the step again i can do i can live with the static step but since i have defined the density it's better to go with the dynamic step maybe because the loading rate is very high so just i can do it with the dynamic as well and my cpu is faster in that way so that's what i have done here so i have run it for that total shock wave time so you remember it was around 0.001 seconds which is around one point something milliseconds so that's what i have used here rest is our default i haven't changed anything at all all right for output yes we have to change few things here we have to ask for the status of the element so i can do that by selecting the status option because that can be useful in deleting the element sometimes for failure, I have used or asked for the damage criteria values so that I can find out when it's one that damage has been occurred, whether in fiber or the matrix material. Other than that, everything is default here as well. Then I go to the interactions. There is no interactions you can see, so everything is empty. For loading, I have first fixed the outer periphery of this composite as experiment. And I see you can see all everything is fixed to zero for the loading or pressure wave case i have defined a pressure value let's say of 400 again i have increased it to large generally it's not that high but 
I'm not discussing anything of that. All right, and then I have an amplitude function. This amplitude function is taken from experiments or close to an experimental data, and it looks something like this, right, based on the experimental shock wave. And this is this amplitude. So you see, you can create an amplitude by pressing that button there. So if you go here again, you can create amplitude by clicking on this button and create a new amplitude, or you can also go in the tools, measure manager, and you can either create or edit. So if you look at this amplitude two, so it's the same values from the Excel file, which I have copy pasted here. All right, so everything is done. I go to the mesh. Again, I have used a global mesh. It's a simple com geometry. So you always have to do it part by part. So in this case, I'm using a mesh size of 0.5, which is fine enough, but you can play around with that. And then I matched it with the shell elements. In the shell elements, again, you can see that I have everything as default so it should be explicit right shell elements linear elements are available element deletion default or you can say yes if you want and then the last thing is a job i go to the job and i just submit the job and now i go to the results and this is my initial stage as you see here and when i start to press the animation button for stresses so you see a shock wave is acting from this direction which was the pressure and you see how things are changing as the shock wave is applied. I think peak was, was already almost there. And you see damage has started to propagate. So these layers, some of them here, have all, all the plies have failed in this area and so your structure is failing. You, it's better visible if you see from the front. And you see how the stresses are generated because of the pressure wave or explosion and then you see the failure starting in this area first and then also mainly it failed near the boundary conditions or the place where it's being fixed because of the stress concentration you can also see damage due to what so you can play around with that again so if you look at this so you see damage due to the fiber and compression is in these areas damage in the tension is this area because this is highly under tension loading and some areas are already failed because of that criteria and you see i mean so you can play around with that and you can see how it's doing in this way so i hope this makes sense and you understand how you can apply an explosive rate loading or a high strain rate loading on your structure if it's exposed to some kind of event which is once in a lifetime and it, it acts on the structure for a few milliseconds or microseconds so thank you for watching and i hope it was helpful if you have any more quest questions or comments on this then you can ask again before i leave just imagine this is an idealized case where pressure is applied uniformly but in reality the pressure is not distributed uniformly so so that is one thing you need to find out how you can find that information either from experiments or doing some multi-skill simulation multi-phase simulation physics based simulation where you have some fluids etc Anyways, thank you very much for watching and I hope this was helpful and I will see you next video. If, if you have any comments, then please write below and also don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. Bye for now.